Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and uh, you already know it. This is going to be an unboxing video. You already know it's in the box, too. I just feel like I should make it some kind of mystery, but you read the title. You know what's going on. I've got the Grote Semi Hollow in here. Uh, the uh, Semi Hollow that sells for $169 on Amazon right now. Uh, as you know, if you've been watching the channel, I got this Firefly Semi Hollow when they were like $130, $140, something like that. I think they're still around that price range. And then eventually, I got the Harley Benton, <laughs> so I did a comparison to those, and I decided that I'd rather keep the Harley Benton over the Firefly, and I've been trying to get myself psyched up to get rid of this thing, but in the back of my head, I'm like, I should, I should compare one more. I should compare it to the Groat. People keep bringing up the Groats and asking about them, and I actually get a bunch of like affiliate sales. of the Grote Semi Hollow off of the Grote Full Hollow Jazz guitar that I bought, which tells me that people are curious about the Semi Hollow from Grote, and so I should be checking it out. And also I've been very satisfied with the quality of this Full Hollow from Grote, so maybe the Semi Hollow will be just as good. All right, my blade's open. Let's do this thing. Let's discover the condition of the object inside the box. That should really be the new title for all unboxing videos. Unboxing is too simple. We should call it, let's discover the condition of the object inside the box. It has a certain ring to it, doesn't it? Double boxes. We got double boxes here. New fort for my kids. That's me. That's some, some kind of greasy oil stain there. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. There does seem to be a guitar inside the box. Customary Radio Shack quality cable. Throw that away immediately, get yourself a real cable. I mean, if you don't have any cable at all, this is your first guitar, yeah, you're gonna use it, but come on. There's no way that cable's gonna be decent at all. I like cheap stuff, but there's a limit. Well, there she is. It smells like sawdust and like poly finish. There's some polishing compound left. Places on the finish, not a huge surprise. Wires sticking out of the F-hole a little bit, but those can be pushed to the side, I'm sure. Just a little bit tacky looking. I mean, it all seems to be there. It appears to be a guitar. The ends of the frets seem fine. Gritty frets. They feel like chalky, which is a pretty normal thing to encounter on guitars of this price range. The neck feels very familiar. A little bit flatter than you might expect. The back of it being a little bit flatter. The radius, I'm sure, is like a 12 or a 14. Pretty flat radius. So I'll take the plastic off the pickups. Finishing issues around the binding in the F hole. Little bumps and stuff in the clear coat. I mean, it's it's a hundred and sixty dollar guitar. I think one fifty nine ninety nine was the price. It doesn't have the really cool uh, truss rod cover that the Full Hollow Jazz does, where it's like this metal embossed cover that can be slipped to the side because it's only on one screw. It's got you know your expected like pit guard material truss cover. I 
I mean, the wood grain is is standard. It's not you know anything amazing or flamey or anything like that. But you wouldn't expect anything like that from a budget guitar. I feel like I should plug it in and play it. There's elements to the finishing that just are immediately sloppy looking. Um, it's like the buffing wheel was dirty or something, or the sandpaper they were using was dirty on this uh, binding. That I'm sure isn't real binding. I'm sure it's uh, you know some sort of poured on epoxy or something like that. Or maybe it is binding. I can see the seam on the side of it. It's some kind of material that they use for the binding. But it just looks like whatever they polished it with or sanded it with was very dirty. Um, the fret dot markers on the side are kind of drifting off the fretboard onto the edge of the neck. There's, just, I mean, you're going to have quality control issues and aesthetic issues at this price point. You just are. The question is, I mean, does it play? Is this a playable guitar? for 160 bucks. So uh, let's find that out. Let's see what it sounds like. Well, it appears to produce signal. It needs a good tune, obviously. There's some kind of major rattle going on with the bridge or a saddle or a screw or something. You probably can't hear that through the mic, but something is, is sizzling like a little, uh, you know, ride cymbal with a rivet in it down there but I don't think you can hear it when it's plugged in. So a bridge replacement might be in order or just tightening up one of those screws or something like that. It's hard to tell what that could be without spending some real time with it. Pretty standard looking hardware on this. It wouldn't be hard to replace any of it. Right off the bat, it sounds good. Doing a little level adjustment here. Yeah, that buzz is gonna, that little rattle is gonna bother me. It's like there's a little tambourine player inside the guitar playing along with me. Checking out the build inside, there's an interesting little strut up here supporting the body. Oh, interesting. Different construction than the Firefly and the Harley Benton. That's for sure, just checking it inside. I don't know if it's better or worse, but it is different. I feel like the bridge pickup is a little dark. Let's throw some drive on it. right? The tones and the volumes are wide open.
It doesn't sound bad. I just feel like I like a little bit more sparkle and bite with my bridge humbuckers. Feels nice to play. The frets are all flush with the edge of the neck with the fretboard. Nothing's hanging over, nothing's biting into my skin in any sort of way. Like I mentioned, the frets feel unpolished and kind of chalky. Sloppy playing today, I'm sorry guys. impressions are that the bones are there with this guitar. It's a playable guitar. The neck is very comfortable and playable. feels a little, you know, big in a wide sort of way, like it's filling the width of my hand well, but it's uh, not thick. It's a modern thickness on the neck. Really flat fretboard. Ooh, that was a stinky note. Let's do some reverb. For just having tuned it, it's holding tuning stability pretty dang good right now. The tuners felt a little cheap when I was tuning them. They have that little bit of give when they're just sitting there resting where they wobble back and forth a little bit. But it came in tune just fine. They feel firm enough. I don't think the tuners are going to be an issue unless you have a personal preference. I mean, with the, you know, at this price point, you know, the quality control could drift significantly from guitar to guitar and you might get a bad set of tuners you might get a bad set, set of anything really i mean it really is um you know at your risk when you buy a guitar this affordable um if you're getting this off of amazon prime like i did it's, it's fairly easy to return things so the risk is kind of negligible if you're fine taking it back to uh, amazon to you know a shipping center to return it I don't know. My, my impressions are that it's a that it's a decent guitar. That it's a you know it's a safe buy based on what I'm holding right here. I would have been very happy to have this guitar as a new player when I first started out. There's nothing about it that I think would have held me back, or you know been a detriment to me as a new player. I say that being a sloppy, not terribly good player, <laughs> you know, decades later, decades into playing guitar, I'm still not that great. Let's, uh, let's do some sound comparisons and some direct comparisons to the other two guitars. Here is the Harley Benton. Is it in tune? Fingers crossed. No. there's a little bit more high end and sparkle off the bridge humbucker. Not as much as I was expecting though, it's still got that kind of humbucker thud to it.
Of course, this one has the coil cuts. And it went out of tune. It's been so long since I played this thing, the weather made it go sharp, actually. <laughs> I mean, the coil cuts really make this guitar for me. It's pretty much the main reason I chose it over the Firefly. <laughs> the playability is about the same. The quality control is higher on this guitar, but the playability, when you've got your eyes closed, they're both fun guitars. But that coil cut just does it for me. The neck feels fuller and not as wide. It might be the same width, technically, but something about it feels less wide in my hand than the Grote does. So let's do a quick comparison side by side. I might have been tripping. This might have slightly brighter sounding pickups. Not bad, let's compare it to the Firefly. Bringing a lot of guitars into frame here. They all kind of sound the same. <laughs> I don't know what I was trying to prove there. When you do like a, like a quick comparison, it's like, oh, they all sound kind of just like, you know, affordable humbuckers. There's nothing amazing or, you know, incredible there. There's nothing bad about them. They're just a functional humbucker guitar. I gotta say, all three of these guitars though, and my book are winners. I think they're all buy, buy, buys. It really comes down to, you know, a few different points that you need to consider for yourself. I think the cosmetic quality control is much higher on the Harley Benton compared to the other two. The Firefly has the lowest cosmetic quality control. It's also the cheapest by $20 cheaper than this one. Um, there are some cosmetic issues with this guitar. I should test, test it to see if it's microphonic because the Firefly is def definitely microphonic. Throw on a couple delays. Hello! Micro! 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 I don't think that's the pickup. I think that's the resonance of the body because I was able to do it up here when the bridge was selected. I'm sure there's a little bit of microphonic quality to it. Um, not as much as this one, if I remember correctly. Micro! Yeah. I don't even have a drive on that. Micro! Much, much more microphonic pickup in the Firefly. I know they have new versions of this and, you know, the quality drifts and changes with each run of them. Um, so people are going to be in the comments telling me that the new ones aren't microphonic or it was a certain run that was. I don't know. I'm not in control of that. I'm just in control of the one that I bought. But there are, you know, famously quality control issues that happen with the Fireflies. You're going to get it with any budget line, honestly. But like I was saying, I think they're all buy-by-buys. Uh, you have to be aware of what you're getting into. You might need to change pickups. You might need to change uh, bridge hardware like this one. I've got to figure out what's going on with that rattle.
Neither of these two have it, but this one has it for sure. The pickups sound fine. The playability is there with the neck. Totally fine playable guitar. I would give this to a new player, no problem, and be like, here, learn guitar. You can learn guitar on this. There's nothing about it that's gonna hold you back. And you know, it's cheap, you can smash it up, you can modify it, you can get creative with it, put stickers on it, who cares? Take it to summer camp, no one's gonna worry about it. Or you know, have a beat around a second backup guitar in your collection, or if you're just curious about semi-hollows. I think any of these is a good buy. I can recommend them all. You just have to be aware of what you're getting into as far as like quality control issues with cosmetics, microphonic things can happen with cheap guitars. Uh, it doesn't seem to be happening with this guitar or this guitar. I don't know, what else do I say? What, what do you guys wanna hear from me? Uh, ask me questions in the comment section down below and I'll try my best to answer them. Uh, now that I've got three of these things here, I've gotta figure out which one I'm gonna keep. <laughs> Because I definitely don't need three semi-hollows in my life. One is enough. For the style of playing I do, maybe even too much. Maybe I don't even need one of these guitars, but it's been a fun journey exploring these budget guitars. Uh, I used Inner Circle money to buy these. That's the Patreon uh, group, by the way. Um, so if you want to support you know, me exploring you know, budget stuff, so that you know, you as a consumer can know what's going on with it. Go ahead and support us on Patreon. The link's down below. Um, other than that, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me a rude, nasty comment. Support us on Patreon and uh, stay grounded. I'll play out with some sort of you know little thing here. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have some fun.